This is an exclusive for Basement Recordings. The program is called When Steel Talks, and we are very, very pleased to welcome Mr. Robert Greenwich, arranger and seconds player extraordinaire. <laughs> very nice to have you, Mr. Greenwich. Very nice to be here. And When Steel Talks is very much interested, as um, are our um, people on the website, to get a bit more into arrangers in general. And of course, at this moment, we have you with us. We're going to be asking a few questions. Um, based on your arranging experiences and also we're going to focus a bit on you as a solo performer and your professional experiences worldwide. Once okay. again, welcome. Thank you. Um, good um, to be here. Let's start with how did you get started in Pan? I got started in Pan uh, through uh, my family. Uh, my uncle, a gentleman by the name of Carl Greenwich, this is now. And um, I was born in, in Labrador. And uh, he had a band, they had a group uh, called the Star Boys Steel Band uh, in Lower Labrador. And that's where I uh, recently just across the street from the band. So I used to hear the music, I used to watch my uncle and then tune the pans and make all these different things and the songs and I was uh, probably around the age of six, seven before I walked in the pan yard. And uh, tried to stand on a box to play the bass type thing. Um, and the other pans too because they were still too tall for me. And um, the guys was interested in showing me and my uncle and um, the other folks around the band. I take the um, initiative to really, um, really try and learn as much as I could. I mean, I was young at the time, uh, six, seven years old. I didn't know exactly what it was until maybe, you know, at the age of 10, I realized what I was doing. And um, I tried to learn as much as I could within that, uh, that group. Um, we had people uh, like uh, uh, Martin Albino and Lord Albino um, used to coach us, uh, teach us a lot of uh, musical stuff on, on the blackboard, actually, the chords and the different things that we learned. That's what we learned uh, really to, uh, to play. And um, I've been with them, I went with Star Boys for uh, a long period of time, uh, just learning and getting more experiences of what it was, parenting. And um, I think um, after that I went to another group called the City Kids, which is family band too, from Belmont. It's a very small band, but uh, they were. A lot of people came out of that band that uh, did well also, and that was on my father's side. So I had music on my mother's side, and my uncle and them, and uh, had music on my father's side. So there was the two bands I was uh, learning a lot of stuff with, and then eventually I did the graduation thing by going to Desperados in 1965. Um, I was played around, and I. Uh, so then Rudolph Charles found us and uh, we had some great pans and great sounding pans from a new guy called the Bass Band. And uh, when they heard the pans, uh, he asked us uh, if we could come join Desperados and if we could bring the pans with us. And we mm -hmm. did. And that was in 1965. And um, from there, uh, I stayed with Desperados until uh, at least 1998. So it was a long period of time in the year I was doing it. Um, after, uh, after learning the music, yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Anyway, <clears throat> so after, um, after being with Desperados, uh, they started to, uh, they started to give me opportunities to learn to arrange. We started learning a lot of stuff from like Clive Bradley, uh, Beverly Griffith. Uh, those were the arrangers um, at the time with Desperados. And you I was looked upon them as maybe your mentors at the time? Yes, yes we did because uh, we were always interested in arrangement, how to do it. We could have done a little bit but it wasn't all that great like the, those professional guys. And um, as the time go along they gave us opportunities to arrange stuff for the bands, songs I should say. Um, but this was, and uh, I started to do, you know, little pop songs for them, little, you know, easy songs until I got 
they used some to more experience. Yeah, they're more experience. And then they would uh, we would ask them, you know, how is this and everything and they would, you know, advise us on what to do and how not to do, you know, how to get this correct chord or the voices. Mostly voicing was the main thing that we were interested in. What exactly is voicing? Voicing is like um, knowing how to voice the instrument, knowing the ranges of the instruments um, as an arranger standpoint. And you have music with, um, if you have a tenor palm with a low C, and you have a part where it has a low B and a low A under that, um, you get a, it's a little dif difficult because of the fact that it's not, the note is not in the drum, so you have to transfer it to another instrument which is lower that have that note. And um, you may want to make a chord of like C major, uh, when you want to make that C major chord, the voicing is important in that you may have the basses play C, you might have the four pounds play C and E, you might have the seconds play E and G, you might have, uh, they would spread it out to the nines, they would have the tenors play like G and D, so it just spread out, it's a whole voice. That's what one chord. Or one chord. That's good. So you would regard um, Savoy's, City Kids and Desperados basically as a training ground? Yeah. And we would still like your musical influences and experiences, and we would look at like Clyde Bradley, yes, and Beverly Griffith, very correct, um, and Martin Al, you know, another guy. Mark Nalvino. Yeah, he was the first one uh, that started teaching us in the subways, so I can't forget him. Martin Alvino, yes. okay. So and also my uncle, Carl Bernard here, because I mean, what you've done is encapsulated one of the questions which I would have later asked, but okay. you've just taken care of that as yeah. to who your musical influences were and who your mentors were. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. exactly what it was. And um, also, there's another guy that I looked up to as a player. Um, he's a tuner these days. He used to play with the Invaders uh, many years ago, and he's one of the most famous uh, soloists also, is um, Steve Andrew Riley. It's called Koboja. This is nickname up here. And um, he tuned, as a matter of fact, he tuned the back of Pants and Mood this year. And this was uh, one of the guys that uh, we used to uh, uh, listen to a lot because we like his style of sewing as a soloist, not as a full band and sound, but as a soloist. Does he still play? When he plays. Um, when is the last time you personally heard him play? Well, I heard him play bass not too long ago um, at the Washington Carnival. But um, he's, uh, he's one of the world's, uh, he's still, I think, uh, considered one of the world's best player. He's just uh, one of those quiet guys that take up the tune and he took a whole other occupation by being a fireman earlier on. And now he's settled back into his head, now he's tuning a lot and um, he's still playing. But I haven't heard him play like the double seconds or the tenors, which I know is, is very good. Look at that. Yeah, and um, he's, I guess these days he's more sticking to the tuning of the drum. And um, trying to get uh, a total of quality as you go But he been tuning for a long time too, together with uh, Eddie Manette. Mm -hmm. So, because he came out of Invaders, and um, our uh, connection was be we had a connection between Invaders and Desperados. And the connection was because uh, we used to have the same kind of range of palms, like Invaders, mm -hmm. Desperados had. And um, Ellie and Jack used to come up to uh, Desperados. We all used to go down to uh, Invaders and they used to you know, incorporate things together and put people together like the tuners. He wanted to get that sound they had down mm -hmm. there. He also wanted to, um, which is Rudolf, he also wanted to get the best tuners they have around, uh, the best arrangers and make his band what they are today. And um, through having people like Jack and all these uh, people came up the hill to play with us, mm -hmm. we had a um, Good experiences by learning a lot of stuff from them. And they take you back to another high school. Would you be working with Despers, you think, again? Uh, maybe sometime in the end. I mean, uh, all I did was really take a break from working with them because I not got burnt out by. After so many years, I just decided to take a break from them. And um, I. Um, they have. Uh, Clive Bradley is really back with the band, which is great, mm -hmm. and he, um, before, as I said, they were the arrangers of the band in the earlier days, and then they take a break, and we step in as arrangers. We? <laughs> we meaning? Well, we meaning we had a group of us in Despers that wanted to, that were learning to arrange at the time, like myself, um, Denzel Botas from Despers. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Nolly Nicholas is past. Um, there's a couple other players uh, all around um, that came through our hands. Uh, 
up here in New York, uh, from the Desk State Band also. Some of them have their own bands now. Um, I just can't call everybody's name. I know that a lot of them are forming their own thing and they learn a lot, uh, even from Clyde, even from Beverly, because we were all in, in the band together. And um, as I said, the we were talking about like myself and then said, uh, for the name of Tobin, uh, uh, Nolan Nicholas, we call him Panther, he passed, um, and a couple of others in the band that started to arrange also. So most of the stuff that we learned, as I said, was right there at the Laventon Community Center. That's where we learned to really uh, do most of the arrangements. And, they gave us the opportunity to do it. We would just listen to the records and try to take the music off the record player uh, because most of us at the time couldn't read too well and still can't. <laughs> but um, it's, it's good, reading is good when you want to learn something because if you have it and you memorize it after that, you should be okay. You need people just to read and find you in your class. You, know? you arranged for Soul Nights? So Pan Nights. So Pan Nights? Yes. Okay. That came about through, um, well, the, the Pan Yard of So Pan Nights was between my house and Despers. Yeah. So when I go to Despers, I would come back up stuff by Solo. So was a young band came out from the So Harmonites band. Okay, I was wondering they had a split. Was a okay. They had a split, and the sponsor went with Pan Nights. They didn't stay with the Harmonites. So they have a nice now as I think they are being sponsored by White Oak okay. or Fernandez or one of those. But the, soul, uh, the sponsor went with Pan Nights and they, uh, this is Owen Serrett and this band and they wanted to, uh, they, you know, they had a, they formed this band they wanted an arranger to do some music for them and they asked me if I can do it. And I did say yes because um, in those days you could have arranged with two, three, four bands if you wanted. Now it's different. They are a lot of you only one band to arrange for. In Trinidad? Yes. Okay. This is a little ticklish because you can't tell a doctor how many patients to operate on. Mm. You know? Um, or you can't tell a captain how many houses to build. Mm -hmm. So, um, due to that, um, we got um, Clyde Bradley back at Desperados and I went ahead and stayed with Solo Pan Nights as the arranger for the last five years. How long they are mm -hmm. What are the differences, if any, that you found with arranging for Despers in contrast with Soul Pan Nights? Uh, the difference is the players a lot um, because.